right, and in this video I'm going to showcase you the Infinity project of Davy and how to properly install it pretty much from, from A to Z. So Davy's Infinity project is a hybrid firmware and in the end it will enable you to have a 6.61 permanent patched LME or Pro custom firmware. You will find this article on volalo.net as of Sunday and in this article you will have a lot of text and a few links. You will have a link to our previous blog post, to Davy's lol hacks blog post and the link to the necessary files of course. Keep in mind that this does not work on the PSP E1000. It works with every PlayStation Portable except for the E1000. So it works with 1000, 2000, 2088 version 3, any kind of 3000 and the PSP Go. In this article you will also find a few links like the default version 631 and the default version 661, the PSP Go exclu exclusive 631 and the PSP Go exclusive 661. You will also find links to the LME and Pro custom firmware. I've used the latest versions of them, which are 2.3 and C2 by Crate Razor. And you might need the Chrono Switch downgrader, but as of now, you don't need them. Need it. You may need it if you want to uninstall Infinity. You also need Davies Infinity files, but they are not added yet. That's why I have made, I've added some markers in this article. This article isn't finished yet, so you will find something that looks like this. Okay. Then we have the files over here. I also have links in this txt file. I'm going to copy these links into the video description. The infinity links are still missing as of now because Davy isn't finished yet, but as of publishing this video, Davy will be finished. I'm also using um, beta files at the moment, but that doesn't matter. They are pretty much nearly identical to the finished files because these are the most recent ones. Okay, we have the PSP Go updaters and the normal updaters. The normal updaters work on the PSP 1000, 2000, 3000 and E1000. And the PSP Go updaters only work on the PSP Go. So you only have to use the updaters for your PSP. If it is not a PSP Go, you use 631 and 661. But if it is a PSP Go, you use the 631 Go and 661 Go. But before we start with this, we either select the Pro or LME custom firmware. In my last video I showed the Pro custom firmware, so in this video I'm going to showcase the LME custom firmware. You just drag and drop this PSP folder onto your PlayStation Portable, which you will connect via USB cable to your computer. Then we have to unpack the Infinity files. You will have three folders. You have a stage folder which contains these files and you will have another stage folder but it contains a PSP folder, a game folder and then you have this flasher folder and this maker folder. You th need these three folders, the flasher folder, the maker folder and only the stage folder that contains these files. And after you have these three folders you don't need the other base folders anymore. We will also need the 631 and the 661 for your device. In my case, I'm using a PSP Go in this video because I used the non-Go in the last video. This 631 Go updater is inside of the update folder and I'm just drag and drop, drag, drag and drop it. And then I'm going to rename it into 631 because this is the 631 updater. I also have to do the same thing with the 661 updater, PSP game update eboot, drag and drop it, rename it into 661, and now we have a 631.pvp and 661pvp. We both copy these files and copy it into the maker folder. So our, our maker folder has three files, 631pvp, 661pvp, eboot pvp. Our stage folder has the eboot pvp and a few other files and our flasher folder only has the eboot.pvp. Now we copy the flasher maker and stage folder onto our PSP and it has to be inside of PSP, game and then we copy it in here. And as you can see my LME installer and launcher are also in this folder because I properly drag and dropped the LME files from the zip file onto my PSP. In the end we need at least five things on our PSP 
and those are the stage folder, the flasher folder, the maker folder, the custom firmware installer and the custom firmware launcher. The chrono switch downgrader is only necessary if you intend to only try Infinity and maybe uninstall it, but it's not recommended to uninstall it, unless you're using a PSP 1000 or 2000, and then only if they can use the full custom firmware, so like the ME or the CIPL Pro. Okay, that should be everything we need. I have the updaters, I have the Infinity files and the custom firmware files. Now we're going to confirm it once again. I have my LME installer, I have my LME launcher, I have my flasher folder, I have my maker folder that contains the two updater files, and I have my stage folder which contains these files. If everything is on it, in, in, if everything is in its place, we can now um, disconnect our PSP from our computer and continue with the things we have to do on the PSP. Okay, assuming you did everything right, we will now continue on the PSP. Keep in mind that if possible, you should already have the custom firmware installed, such as the 661 LME. It doesn't really matter what custom firmware is installed, it's just recommended that you're running pretty much any kind of modern 6 point whatever custom firmware. So 620, 635 or 639 or even 660 are also okay. You will have five things on your PSP, the Infinity Firmware Builder, the Infinity Flasher, the Bootloader Configurator, the LME Installer and the LME Launcher. If you choose the Pro Custom Firmware, you will have the Pro Installer and Launcher. Okay, at first we have to build the firmware because we want to install the firmware, but at first we'll have to build a necessary file. Okay, the first thing we do is we build a hybrid firmware. Now our PSP is verifying the two updater files we just put into the build folder and after it verified the 631 and 661 updater file it's going to create a merged file that's called data.mfc. Keep in mind that if you're running this on an older PSP or on a memory stick this may take longer than they showcase in this video because the PSP Go updaters are smaller than the normal updaters and the internal storage of the PSP Go is much faster than any, mem any memory stick for the regular PSPs. So in this video this is going to be super fast because I'm using the PSP Go, the PSP Go updaters and the internal storage of the PSP Go. On a regular PSP or a PSP Go with a memory stick this may take longer so if possible put the files on the internal storage of the PSP Go instead of the memory stick if you have the choice. Keep in mind before you do this you should have at least 100 MB of free space on your memory stick slash internal storage because the file that's created will take a bit of space and it's recommended to have a small amount of buffer space. <clears throat> okay, this is nearly done. Like I said, on the PSP Go, this is pretty fast. On the regular PSP, this will take a bit longer. Come on, 100. Okay, there we go. Now we will exit back into the main menu, the X and B of the PSP. And now we will have to either connect our PSP via USB cable to a computer but I'm too lazy to do this so I'm just going to use PSP filer because we just created a new file and this new file is located inside of the build folder and we have to move it into the flash folder now the flasher folder the file is located in PSP game okay it's actually in the maker folder there we go data MFC and I'm going to copy this file into the flasher folder. The file is between 25 and 40 MB. This depends on what PSP you're using. And this file is specific to your PSP's model. 
that's not entirely true, but it's recommended to create this data file on each PSP itself. You can, in theory, use the same file that you used on a 1000, on a 2000 and 3000 as well. It's just important that you that a PSP Go is using its own file. You must not use the normal file on a PSP Go and you must not use the PSP Go file on the other PSPs. So the separation is pretty much PSPs with UMD drive and PSP without UMD drive. Okay, now after we move this file, the 661 Infinity Flasher has everything it needs and now we can use it to flash the 661 firmware hybrid firmware on our PSP Go. Be sure to read this. I already, I already read this because I beta tested this and I'm going to agree. It's also recommended that you have enough that your battery is enough charged enough, has enough energy, whatever. It's recommended that your battery has at least 50% and if you want to be very sure that nothing goes wrong, connect the charger. In this video I'm not going to connect the charger because on the PSP Go it would go here and then I couldn't stand it on the ground and then I would need something to hold the PSP Go in place. But that doesn't matter. It's very important that you must not cancel the flash process. If I would now turn off my PSP Go or go back to the home menu, the device would be bricked. So as soon as you start the flash, the flash process, the flashing, you must not touch the device anymore until it's finished and tells you to press a button. Flashing the firmware will take between 2 and 3 minutes. Building the firmware depends on your device and your memory stick, but it can take between 1 and 5 minutes. When this is finished, we will have a hybrid firmware on our PSP. This works on PSP 1000, 2000, any kind of 3000 and of course the PSP Go. The E1000 is currently not supported and the outcome will look, feel and behave like the original version 6.61 even though technically it's a mixed version between 6.31 and 6.61. The reason for this is there's a vulnerability in 6.31 that got fixed in a late 6.3 whatever firmware, maybe only as of 6.60, whatever, it got fixed in a later firmware, so instead of using the permanent patch on the original 6.61 we have to create this hybrid 631-661 firmware. Now we can press X and reboot into the 661 hybrid firmware. Like I said, the device will think it's running a normal default 661 firmware, but actually it isn't. But that doesn't matter. Any kind of software, regardless what you run, homebrew, custom firmware, original firmware, doesn't matter. Any kind of software will think this is the original 661. So now, after I reset these broken settings, I will end up on normal 661. Keep in mind, this is a hybrid version, but the PSP thinks it's the normal one. And what can you do on the normal 661? That's correct, you can install an additional custom firmware, such as me or pro. I'm going to change the... oh, it's yellow now. Okay. I was about to change the color to something else because gray looks bad. I'm, I'm gonna change the color anyways. Yellow is also still too bright. I'm just gonna take one of the dark colors. And <laughs> this is a fun glitch. Every time I open and close this, it creates another infinity symbol icon, but it shouldn't. Usually you should only see version 661 and a small infinity sign behind it. So now we know we're running 661 infinity and now we can install the LME custom firmware. I know we were previously running the 661 LME custom firmware but this doesn't matter. 
installing the hybrid firmware wiped everything of the device? No, that's, that's wrong. It wiped everything from the internal flash, and the internal flash only contained the PSP's firmware. And your settings like the date, your nickname, your PlayStation login data, and so on. This got deleted, but the files on your memory stick and on your PSP Go's internal storage are not touched. So if you have any photos, music, videos, or games on the PSP, they will still be in the same place they were before. Don't worry. The only thing that got removed was your old firmware. It got replaced by this hybrid firmware. <clears throat> okay, we installed the LME custom firmware, then our PSP reboots. Now it's ready for launching the LME custom firmware. You will see a little um, model 05G exiting. This pretty much just means it detects my PSP and the PSP is the PSP Go. The PSP Go is the 05G model, the fifth PSP generation. And exiting pretty much just means it's going to reboot into the custom firmware. Now we're running the LME custom firmware. As you can see, 661 LME 2.3 with a small infinity symbol. Now I'm going to enter the recovery menu because I want to change something. And what I'm going to change is I'm going to skip the Sony logo, the Game Boot logo, and a few other personal things I usually change, such as speed up memory stick access to always. The rest is not important for now because the last thing that's missing at the moment is making the LME customer firmware permanent. Because if I now would remove the battery, which is a bit hard on the PSP Go, but you can also just fully shut down the device, the LME would not return. Not yet. Next I'm going to load the bootloader config and in this bootloader configurator we will at first be greeted to infinity. We can update infinity either via memory stick, internal storage or internet and we can install a module. Installing the module is pretty much making the custom firmware permanent. I'm going to install the ME custom firmware, then we go back to infinity and we quit the homebrew. That's it, it's just a small click that changes the PSP from booting into original firmware to your custom firmware. Keep in mind you have to install Pro or LME before you make them permanent. You are not allowed to make them permanent before you install them, because that can cause problems. Now I'm going to shut down the device. And if I now boot the device, you will see that it takes one and a half seconds longer than usually to start the PSP, but it will automatically boot into the LME custom firmware, as you can see now. I'm running a 661 LME custom firmware, and my PSP is automatically starting it by itself. The only thing that's still here is this silly bug that if you exit access and leave the system information that it will add more and more and more infinity icons. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be fixed in the final version, or at least I hope so. So yeah, this was my little video about the infinity hybrid farmer of Davy, how to install it. And if you for whatever reason want to uninstall it, just add the normal 661 updater, which you can't run. And the Chrono Switch, Switch version 7 downgrader. And if you run the Chrono Switch downgrader, it's going to force the updater to work. And then it's going to install the 661, the normal original non hybrid 661. And you will be back on the normal firmware. But for now, we will just have our 661 LME 2.3 custom firmware, which is permanent patched. That's it. I'm the Dad and I wish you a lot of fun with Davies Infinity Project and see you soon.